Okay, so uh, the first demonstration is for um, the use of protape of gold um, in a curved canal system. Um, protape of gold, one of the drawbacks of protape of gold is the number of files um, that it uses. Um, that is both a drawback and an advantage in some ways because it means that you can uh, really use uh, the files to change the shape of the canal in the way that you wish um, compared to single file systems. Um, the system itself is um, comes in individually blister packed um, packs. Um, you've got the Shaper X file, the Shaper 1 file, the Shaper 2 file, the Finishing 1 file, the Finishing 2 file and the Finishing 3 file. Um, the files are used order from right to left, so we're starting with the SX to S1 to S2 to F1 to F2. It's rare that you'll be using the F3. These are all the files taken out of uh, the packaging and put into an endo view sponge, which is what I suggest you do. So as with anything, we start off using hand instruments. So first thing we have is a size 10K flexo file, and this is just going to be used to scout the canal. So we put it into the canal, passive engagement, just seeing how it feels, letting it go as far as it will Go without placing any force onto it at all. So that's going to about two thirds of the length of the canal. And then we're going to use a watch winding motion and we're just going to work this until it's loose. Until it goes in to the same length. And as you work it, it's going to go further apically. come out, put it into the sponge, clean it out. It's critical when you're using endo view blocks that you irrigate between steps because the debris will very easily cause blockages. Having gone in with the size 10, the next file we're going to use is a size 15 and it's exactly the same way. File goes in, and again, this is going just past the curve, and that's absolutely fine because that's the first part that we're going to instrument. So, watch winding again, a little bit of translational movement, and as we increase the filing, it's going progressively further. So, having established that, we've now got our glide path created. The next thing we're going to do is to move on to the Shaper X file. So the Shaper X file is what's going to create the coronal flare. So insert it into our uh, motor, set the motor to ProTaper Universal S1 to SX, which is an individual setting on all the motors you've got. And then we're going to put this file into the canal passively, and then we're going to brush it against the far wall. So light engagement and brushing against the far wall. Light engagement and brushing against the far wall. A little bit internally, predominantly working away from the curve. That reduces the risk of strip perforation because there's a larger mass of tooth structure away from the curve. So you don't need to do a huge amount. You want to retain as much dentin as you can. So we'll swap that file out. After each file that's gone in, we're going to irrigate again. Then we're going to take our size 10 and just clean out any debris. So this is known as patency filing. The next thing we're going to do is to move on to our Shaper 1 file, so the S1 file. There. And then we're going to put that in as far as it will go. And this one, in this case, it will go virtually to length. Using it in the same motion, so passive insertion and then brushing on the way out. It's critical to remember that Pro Taper Goal files cut on the outstroke. So as we do more and more shaping like that, the file is just passively going to length. I'm not having to force it. So take Shaper 1 file out, 
irrigate again. Patency filing, removing our debris. You can see we're already getting a little bit of shape there. Next file in the system is the S2. So the S2 will remove dentine further down the canal. The S1 file removes from the top of the canal, the S2 removes dentine further down the canal. And as with the S1, passively just put it in, see where it will go to. So in this case it's going to about two thirds of the length, so just past the curve. And then again, brushing against the wall. So down passively, brush against the wall, always remembering these files cut on the outstroke. So we're not going anywhere near the apex at this point, partly because we've not determined what our working length is. This is just the coronal flare portion of the preparation. So work that until it's nice and loose. Take the file out. Again, irrigate, always irrigate between each file. Patency filing again. Now this is the point at which um, clinically you would establish the working length using your apex locator. Obviously because these are end of view blocks we can't use the apex locator but we do know that uh, they're a set length of 18 millimetres. So we'll use our uh, measuring block, we'll set our file to 18. And now we're going to do the apical glide path. So that's just going to length, nice and easily just gentle rotational movements. Very, very small watch winding movements. Okay, and then move, same again. Measure our size 15. Insert, and just to check if we've got the right amount of kernel flare, if that goes to length, just tapping, which it does, I don't have to work it or screw it in, then that's absolutely fine. So now we're going to work that. So we're going to create our apical glide path. And work that until it just smoothly and easily goes into the apex of the tooth. File out, irrigate again. Patency file to remove the debris. and then get our shape of one file. Measure that to the correct length. And then just by hand, just for the purposes of demonstration, just put it in and see where it goes to. So it's going to about a millimeter or two short of um, the length that we want. And that's fine. If it was up here, so three millimeters short, we've done insufficient coronal flare. But as it's going very, very easily to within one or two millimeters of working length, that's absolutely fine because by preparing a little bit further down, that will very easily pass to the apex. So the file goes in, and again, it's the same as before. Passive insertion, and then just working down. And as you can see now, that's going to length. So brushing, 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 brushing. Very, very light forces apically, very light forces apically. You can lean on it a little bit more laterally. That file goes out, back in again, irrigate, always irrigate between each file. And you're going to be doing this clinically as well. Patency filing making sure that we've got rid of any bits of debris. And then we go in, next file is our S2. We'll measure the S2. Do the same thing again, put it in. Does it go to length more or less? Yes, it does. Put that into the file, into the block. And again, it's a brushing motion, passive insertion, and then pulling out and brushing against the wall, favoring the outer wall, 
where there's more dentine in a clinical setting. So do that until again, that file just goes easily into place. Take the shaping file out, again, irrigate, getting rid of all the debris. Patency file, size 10 back in again to remove any debris there. And then we're going to move on to the finishing file. So again, measuring that to our determined working length. Finishing file's got the yellow band on it. Finishing files are used in a slightly different way. So instead of brushing, as you do with the shaping files, it's just one simple pass to length and then out again. So same thing again, put it in. Is it going to within a millimetre or two of where you want? Yes, it is. So it's a simple pass to the apex, out again. Pass to the apex, out again. Pass to the apex, out again. And then that's done. Irrigate again. Patency file. Remove all the debris. You can see how that's bringing the debris out. And then we're going to go to F2. F2 is 25 taper, sorry, a 25 MAF size with um, an 8% taper. And that's generally considered sufficient to undertake effective irrigation. So we don't need to make it any bigger than that in most cases. Same as before, put the finishing file in. Where does it go to? Passively, it goes to within a millimetre or two of working length. So it's the same again. So the file goes in, inserted down to length once, twice to length, three times to length. File part is now done. Irrigation again, patency filing. And at this point, clinically, this is when the irrigation uh, regime really starts. So if we're going to um, undertake an effective irrigation regime, we're going to need to activate our irrigants um, in a way that a syringe alone system won't work. So we're going to use what's called manual dynamic irrigation or GP pumping. And that will use the GP cone as a piston to act in the canal and push the irrigants around the root canal system into any lateral canals, into any anatomy that's unusual or irregular. So we're going to put that in, fill the canal with our sodium hypochlorite and then we're going to put the GP cone in there and we're just going to pump it up and down like that at that sort of rate. This is all in the CAD lectures obviously there's videos embedded in the CAD lectures but that's how it's going to be done in an endo view block. So about 15 seconds take it out exchange the irrigant back in and pump again. And that's carried on for about 10 syringes per canal. At which point you're either ready to dress the tooth or you're ready to obturate. So that's the sort of preparation that we want to demonstrate. So it's nice, smooth, tapered from top to bottom, following Shilder's principles as we discussed in the lecture.